Hi everyone, this is my first vlog officially on my channel. It's August 29th. And again, I'm in my car driving to do my side job. And I had a couple ideas of what I want to talk about today, which is something I've been wanting to discuss or at least advocate for since I um, can remember. Just based on conversations I have with people, based on what I see going on in the world, um, what I see family members doing, what I see friends doing, all these <clears throat> different lifestyles, all these different situations cause me to feel a certain way. And like most people, <clears throat> I look at everything through the lens of my own experience. And so in this situation, I wanted to uh, express really uh, encouragement. I wanted to express encouragement to people because I've heard a lot of different individuals say to me that they feel like they have no opportunities in life or they have limited opportunities because of the choices they've made. And I'm not talking about, you know, felons or anything. I'm just talking about a person that might have a job and that job <clears throat> pays their bills. That, that job is what they need to survive, but that job is not fulfilling because it's not aligned with their purpose. It's not aligned with what brings them joy. And so these people um, feel unfulfilled, and, and they should. You know, you shouldn't settle for doing a job that has no purpose. That's my opinion. But I think after working with a lot of different kinds of people, you can tell when somebody is working um, to pay their bills and miserable, and another person that is working because they have purpose. And so... I've heard people express, I wouldn't say depression, but hopelessness, I guess is the right word. Hopelessness in their situation, they feel like they are stuck. Uh, <clears throat> I've heard people talk themselves out of opportunities. That's, that's, that, one, that one really disturbs me because... At the end of the day, you are your own um, worst enemy, could be. And we get presented opportunities in life more, more than you think. You, you don't always recognize them. There's opportunities that slip right by, you never even catch them. So you really have to be wide awake to see them and then hopefully have the courage to grab them. So. Um, there's only so many opportunities in life. And, uh, well, I forgot what I was going to say, but really the point is that I want to bring encouragement to those people that might feel that way based on my experience, which I want to share. So I graduated college with a degree that... I had planned out basically a path for myself. So I took a degree that was aligned with that path. And that path was really focused on going to get my master's. To go. Basically, I wanted to continue my education. That was my plan. My plan was to, was to get my bachelor's degree and then follow through and get a master's or a PhD. Because at the end of the day, I wanted to be on the cutting edge of science. That was my goal. I wanted to be, my degree was applied physics. So I had spent most of my junior, sophomore, well, sophomore, junior, and senior years in college doing research. And so I was working with scientists. And I don't know, I guess I fell in love with that because it's just such a cool experience to be on on the leading edge of technology in most cases that's what academia is striving to do is be on the leading cutting edge of technology 
So I was on that side, and so I thought, well, let's just keep pursuing this. Let's, um, I'll do everything I can. I'll do every program, apply for every scholarship, you know, anything I can do to continue this. And so that was my plan for college. You know, I didn't, I made that decision around my sophomore year, and I didn't look back until I graduated. And that's when I realized that I didn't, get a full ride PhD program like my peers so if I was going to continue this path I had set out it was going to now demand more of me it was going to demand that I needed to take out additional loans I needed to be in debt for more you know at least 50% more debt and I really wasn't comfortable with that because I never wanted to have a lot of debt, and really what was the return on my investment? You know, I was going to invest all this money in my education to make X amount per year. What what was the point of that? And so, I went through a phase of emotional, uh, not maybe slight depressions, and just hopelessness, unsure of what I was going to do, because when you're a kid, everybody drills in your head. You know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I had made that decision, but it ended up that reality looked a little different. And so I had to come to terms with that and I had to figure out a way to take what I had and expand on it. And so that's, I guess my first point is that if you're in a position where you might not be where you want to be, uh, in life. You might not be where you want to be in your career. You might not be where you want to be in a lot of different ways. Number one, you got to accept where you are and how you got there. And I realized that I wasn't quite as educated as I needed to be. I didn't get the best grades I could have gotten. It was my fault, really. I didn't strive hard enough. I didn't prioritize my grades hard enough that you know, those weren't my GPA wasn't high enough that I could uh, easily get into this full full ride program. So it was my fault. You've got to own up to your situation because nobody else is making those decisions for you. And a lot of times nowadays in culture, we want to point the finger everywhere else but here. And it becomes way more apparent later in life that nobody cares about your situation as much as you. I mean, you know, it, it's just the reality. Everybody's got their own life to live and you have friends, you have family that love you. That's true, but they're not gonna care about your situation as much as you are. It's on you to do it. And so part of that process when you realize you ended up where you didn't want to be is owning up to it. And a lot of the times it's a battle within. You have to constantly you know, it doesn't matter if you're going through good or bad times. Your job is to always be assessing yourself because you can get carried away in one, in one way or another. You can get carried away. You can become prideful if you, if you, you go through life with a lot of success. You can um, develop some kind of mentality that you're, you know, this great person. And before you know it, you make a mistake that costs you all of that progress. You know, so it can go either way. It could also go to a point of, I made so many mistakes, now I'm depressed about it. So you got to really be careful and you got to be honest with yourself and forgiving as well because we all make mistakes. But the point is that step number one is to acknowledge that you are not where you want to be and it is not okay for you to stay there. Don't settle in life like the majority of people. And that's really upsetting to see is when people realize they're not where they want to be and they do absolutely nothing to fix it and that's the rest of their life and what kind of life is that so have the courage to go through that process and so once you've done that you got to make a plan and so that's what I did I realized uh oh so I made a plan and my plan was the next best thing for me to do was something com something complimentary to what I was trying to originally do so if I was, if my job was, if I went to college for, you know, journalism, it doesn't make sense for me to 
struggle in journalism and pivot to engineering. It, that doesn't make sense because I'm not anywhere near um, prepared or educated to, to succeed in that area. So you've got to f- pivot to something complementary. And that's what I did. So I went to college for applied physics, like I said, which um, was more of a research-based degree. But I decided to pivot into engineering because physics can be applied in many different ways, thankfully. A lot. Some people go into finance economics with, with a physics degree. I chose the engineering route. And so um, I look for jobs. You know, I didn't have a physics, or I didn't have an engineering degree. I had a physics degree, but I still looked for jobs that required an engineering degree. And um, it took me a long time. I had to, you know, this is right out of college. So I was working a part-time job at that time. I was 22 years old. I was working a part-time job during the day and I would come home to my parents' home and I would literally apply to jobs all night long. I probably applied to hundreds of jobs and I really was that desperate because like I said, I was going through some emotional battles at this time. You know, you know, I have matured a lot since then. I was going through the motions of being so hard on myself for this and uh, you know, it's it's a uh, process but either way I applied to all these jobs and some of them I was I felt qualified for but majority of them I didn't and and I knew that going in but I got an opportunity that came up and they were obviously aware that I didn't have an engineering degree so the job I had gotten with this physics degree was called an engineering technician so I wasn't an engineer but I had the opportunity through this job to work under engineers and this is where the story turns and so I took a sacrifice I guess I could say that I took a sacrifice this job because I wasn't qualified entirely they weren't willing to pay me very well you know the average starting salary well nowadays wages are much higher than they were then but at that time you know maybe you could say the average starting salary for an engineer was 60000 I was making a lot less than that but I realized that that was a sacrifice I was going to need to make in order to get what I wanted I was going to have to sacrifice something so I took a huge pay cut essentially to take this job this job that I wasn't qualified for but I knew it was going to be a prerequisite I knew it could be a prerequisite to a better job so I took this job and worked at it for years five years and throughout that time of working extremely hard under these engineers I learned how to think like an engineer I learned how to be hands-on. I learned learned all the tools that an engineer has at their disposal if they're good and know how to use them. So I I learned all these skills. And by the end of the five years, I had become an engineer at that company without an engineering degree. And so the rest is history. I went from that job and I worked as a project manager managing other engineers and the projects that they work on. Fast forward till to today, I'm working as an electrical engineer. Not just an electrical engineer, you know, uh, entry level. I'm working at a high tier electrical engineering job. But it was only because I sacrificed that original um, moment I had, which was to take that job that was presented to me. That was the only thing I could get because really nothing else was panning out even even though I was doing all this applying. Nothing else was really, you know, looking hopeful. So I took that sacrifice. I took that pay cut. I worked that job. I worked extremely hard. I worked overtime all the time. 
actually I worked six days a week for years because I realized that the only way I was going to get what I wanted was through hard work and it meant more than pay it meant that I needed a, to learn a lot of things because I wasn't an engineer I didn't learn these things in engineering school I had to learn that on a job and so that meant, meant I had to spend a lot of time on the job so that's the motivation that's the encouragement I want to give to Whoever's listening to this, if you're not an engineer, I'm living proof. And I'm young. I'm 30 years old. So there's no excuse to um, give yourself. I'm not 50 years old and you say, all oh, the world's different now. No, it's not that different in a couple years. It's not, it is, but it's not different where this doesn't apply. I do not have an engineering degree. And here I am working as an engineer. And that's a pretty hard job. I'm not gonna lie, you, you know, it's it's very technical and it's hard. But that just means that if I can do that, if I could, if I did this, you can do that. Maybe you have a different degree. I don't know. But if you have dreams of becoming an engineer and your degree is somewhat it needs to be somewhat complementary, like I said at the beginning. You need to find something complementary. So if your dream is to be an engineer, you don't have an engineering degree, you better have some kind of mechatronics or automation or something that's tangential to that because, well, I mean, there are people that I know people that are in finance that have teaching degrees. Teaching degrees. So there really is no excuse. The only excuse you have is the one you put on yourself. I never did that to myself. I never boxed myself in with I can't and that won't happen. I did some crazy things to make it happen. I did things that were unconventional and maybe one day I'll talk about them but I had to do everything I could to stand out and it happened eventually and so that's my encouragement is that never box yourself in never um, you gotta be careful about how you talk about yourself you know I was always trying to do my best to be open-minded and be willing to fail and not being hard on myself for failing because at the end of the day, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, the very first project I ever had, I don't want this to go too long, but the very first project I ever had was an electrical project. I didn't even know electrical. And keep in mind, I'm an electrical engineer now. I didn't even know. I didn't take electronics in, in college. That, that, was an old, that was not required for my degree, actually. Some friends of mine took it. But there was an electronics course, which would have taught you something. I didn't know a thing. I literally knew nothing about electrical. It's kind of funny when you think about it. But it's amazing where you can start and where you can end. You know, if you only allow yourself to be vulnerable in those situations and make the most of them. And that's the thing, like like I started off by saying, there's always opportunity in life. You're not always awake to it. So sometimes you don't even see it, even though it passed you right by. Sometimes you see it and you just can't quite grab it. You know, you're just not, something doesn't work out right. You know, something in life happens at the same time. Just things happen and it's, it's missed. So, you know, it's very much situational, but the universal truth here is that you get out what you put in. And if you want to get something amazing on the other, uh, other side of your fear, you've got to sacrifice and do something exceptional to make yourself stand out. And people recognize that, especially in today's age where... 
Um, it's not hard to stand out if you work hard. Not everybody wants to work, you know, 10 hour days when they're only required to work eight. So staying late is enough to make a, you know, an impression. But obviously your work is a big indicator of what you can do, your potential. So I hope this encourages somebody. I just really hate to see people give up so early in life, you know, anything can happen. And I have friends or I know of people that are younger than me and life didn't quite go as they planned, even though they really have no control of life. You know, we're not in control in this world and we are just making the most of it. So why would I negatively affect the rest of my life because one thing did not go right that seems foolish to me so I want you to if you're struggling with this I want you to really think about what I said I want to encourage you to get uncomfortable everything that you do willingly to make yourself uncomfortable is going to make you grow now there's obviously things in life that happen that can make you very uncomfortable but I'm talking about things that you put yourself into that are uncomfortable. You know, you got to make a speech. Well, that's uncomfortable, but you're putting yourself in that situation. You're going to come out of that experience with a different perspective or you're going to learn something. You're, there's going to be a change. And so just because you graduated college doesn't mean that can never happen again. You want to be going through life taking risks, not settling. Do not settle if you're not happy. The answer isn't always schooling. I could go on for a while. I don't want this to be too long, but the answer is not always schooling. You know, now that I had a job with the title of engineer, I leveraged it. Well, my schooling didn't matter at that time. So, and it still doesn't matter now. I have proven myself through my work. And so my degree doesn't matter, it never will. Now, maybe if I needed to be a certified engineer to do civil engineering, you know, that, that would make a big difference. But for what I'm doing, it's never going to matter. And so take risks, calculated risks in life. And you never want to give up on yourself. You never want to settle for less in life because you only live once and it's not that long. And so let's make the most of it. Thanks for listening.